you see this? I cannot believe this is happening again. This is a telltale sign of herbicide contamination and it's not the first time I've dealt with this. Unfortunately, I am not the only one dealing with this issue and it can absolutely devastate your homestead garden. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can be sure this will never happen to you and what I'm doing to try to recover. So it started off innocently enough. I got this new soil block maker tool. You may remember seeing it in some of my videos from earlier this spring. And one of the tricks with these guys is you have to make your own mix to make your blocks so they will hold their shape. So I put together a blend of some homemade compost and some coconut coir and some potting soil, made my blocks, planted my seeds and thought I was golden. Until I noticed that some of my tomato seedlings were starting to have curling twisted leaves. And that's when my heart sunk. I instantly recognized the curling leaves from a number of years ago. And some of you may remember me talking about this, the time that I basically poisoned my entire garden. Now that instance turned out okay. I mean, I was really upset about it for a while, but it ended up being the catalyst that prompted us to build our raised bed garden, which has been fantastic. But the thing I couldn't figure out was when I did it the first time, I assumed it was some hay mulch that caused the contamination. And with these seedlings, there wasn't a piece of hay in sight. And that's when I knew it had to be the compost that I had put into my soil blocks that was causing my plants to become damaged. So there's this category of herbicides called amino pyrrolids, and farmers love to use them on hay fields because these herbicides will kill broadleaf plants like this guy, but they won't damage the grasses. Now the problem with these herbicides is that they tend to stick around forever, and they actually can pass through the digestive tract of an animal and make it into the manure, which then comes into the compost. So I stopped using hay as a mulch in my garden many years ago when I realized that it was the culprit, or at least I thought it was, in making my vegetables die, basically. So I've been using grass clippings instead because I know that we don't spray our lawn with any sort of chemical. However, I totally didn't think about the compost I was putting on my garden. And if you know me, you know I adore compost. I use it all the time. I'm constantly adding it to my growing spaces. I had no idea it could be causing so much damage. And because I've used my compost so liberally, I didn't even think twice about sticking it in the soil block mix that I created for my seedlings. But the tomatoes were the canary in the coal mine. And they, along with peppers or different squashes or melons, are especially sensitive to the amino pyrrolid poison. Now the weird thing is this poison doesn't completely kill the plants, it just stunts them and causes their leaves to twist and get gnarly and curl and then they don't produce really much fruit, if at all. But now I have a problem. I have a mountain of compost and I can't use it. But I've been doing some research and I think I have a plan. So there is some good news. This chemical can break down eventually, it just takes a long time. And from the reports that I've read, it can be anywhere from one to three years. The catch is it's not gonna break down if you leave it mounded up in a pile like that. And I've actually heard several people say that they have evidence of that herbicide sticking around in manure piles for five years or more. What will help it dissipate is to get it into an area where the soil microbes can do their work. So we're planning on spreading this pile out on our pasture like we normally would with a manure spreader and letting the microbes do their thing and help that chemical go away. And lastly, I'm going to start being much more picky with where we source our hay from. Now, thankfully for a lot of these years, we've been able to bale our own hay. Christian has some equipment, so he works out some deals with local ranchers and farmers. But last year we had such a dry summer that we didn't have any hay to bale ourselves. So we hauled it all in from elsewhere. And I think that was our problem. So I'm going to start asking the sellers if they have been spraying their fields. And if the answer is yes, we're gonna keep on looking. If you're feeding alfalfa hay to your animals, then 
oftentimes alfalfa fields aren't going to be sprayed like a grass hay field would be. So you may get off a little bit easier if you're feeding alfalfa, but if it's any sort of grass or a mix, be really, really careful. I had to toss most of the tomato plants I started in the soil blocks because they were beyond salvaging, but there were some that weren't as affected as others. So I went ahead and I planted them in this bed. And some of them have actually continued to grow. Some of them have not so much, like this guy here is probably a little bit of a lost cause because as you can see, it grew, but every single leaf on this plant barring just a few are curled. So I know this guy is not going to ever produce fruit. Um, it just probably needs to be put out of its misery. But I did want to keep some of these because I'm curious to see if some of them can come through the contamination now that they're in better soil. And I don't have high hopes, but for me here on the homestead, knowledge is power and I'm curious. I wanted to see if a plant can survive this, if they had a little bit of exposure during their early stages of life, if they can pull through or maybe not. But hey, I'm not afraid to experiment every once in a while. Thankfully, I did catch this problem in time and I was able to start a bunch more healthy tomato seedlings in good potting soil. So I have them out in my big garden and they are thriving. So we won't be completely without tomatoes this year. So the thing that makes me the most sad about this whole situation is that it just got a lot harder for me to nurture my soil. So I love adding organic matter into our garden here. You know, we do organic gardening methods. It's really important that I'm feeding the soil as it feeds us. And compost was one of the main ways that I did that. And I can't use it anymore. I haven't put any compost on these beds since spring of 2020, and I don't plan on putting any on here anytime soon. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to add some good stuff to my soil in other ways. That rooster is really persistent. So I'm still using lots of mulch. Grass clippings are my safest option right now. So I'm applying those heavily. And as they break down, they're gonna be adding nutrition and organic matter to my soil. I'm also using cover crops in here. That's a video for another day. I put my chickens in here after we've harvested and let them poop all over the beds and put that nitrogen back into the soil. And I'm also using all of the leftover whey that is a result of the cheese making I'm doing at the moment and pouring that onto my beds and letting it add all of its minerals and all that goodness right back into the soil. So even though compost isn't an option right now, there's still plenty of other ways I can add all of that goodness back into my organic garden soil. One word of warning for you, my friend, be very, very cautious of what you're buying at the garden store. Even if you're not making your own compost like me, you can still have this issue hit your homestead. There are plenty of cases that I've read about from folks who had these amino pyrrolids come onto their property via bagged compost or bagged potting soil. So the best way that you can be extra cautious is to do a quick test if you're unsure. And you can do that by getting two separate pots and planting the same type of seed in each pot and then just watching for a couple of weeks to see what happens. These herbicides will also decrease germination. So if those seeds don't come up or if they start to grow and they're all twisted and gnarly like you saw in my tomato plants, that's a good indicator that that product is contaminated. Now, I will say that I've never had this issue happen with bagged potting soil that I've purchased. I start my seedlings in just regular old potting soil from your typical store, and I've never had that issue. But I did buy some organic compost this year, and you can bet that I was really cautious. I actually went with mushroom compost because I didn't want any sort of animal manure coming into my garden that I wasn't sure of. So it definitely is a little bit more of a hassle, but worth the extra bit of caution. So now I wanna hear from you. Have you ever had this happen? And if so, what did you learn and how long did it take for you to see that herbicide residue disappear? I am on a fact-finding mission at this point, so the more info, the better. Leave a comment below.